What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Professor Ram and welcome back to you yet again another video here on the channel. The title does not deceive you. That is right. I know what you might be thinking. What? Professor Anime? Watching Gintama? Nah, nah, there's no way. There's no way. Yes, there is way. There is way. I've actually been watching Gintama on the sidelines a little bit discreetly not not really because over on Twitter I'm hyping everything up about it <laughs> but yeah I wanted to talk about Gintama at least some point on the channel it's just I never got around to it just because of the fact when it comes to long-running series just due to the amount of episodes there are like it's very intimidating for me and amongst other watchers I'm sure to actually go ahead and actually jump on board you know the hype train necessarily but when it comes to Gintama Gintama's very special. I don't know what it is, but it's such an easy series to binge. I don't know if it's for the comedy or the characters, maybe both, but it's just, I don't know. Like, every time I watch it, I just cannot stop. You know, I, I have to look at the next episode, look at the next episode, look at the next episode. And I know by the time, you know, I probably get around to finishing the series, I'm probably going to be left empty inside. Anyways, down to the main point of this video in which you probably clicked on this video in the first place, and that is to hear my own personal thoughts and opinions of the very first main arc of the series, Gintama, titled the Benizakura arc. Now, I'm not giving my, you know, thoughts and opinions, first impressions and all that good jazz, you know, of episodes 1 through 61 of Gintama. You know, that would just be too confusing when it comes down to everything that has happened up to this point, so I'm just basically making this review very simple you know just giving my own personal thoughts and opinions on the very first main arc of Gintama the Benny Zaka arc so with that said everyone sit back enjoy grab your part uh, popcorn pa -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> grab your popcorn because this is probably going to be a long review so with that said let's begin my review of Gintama the Benny Zaka arc <laughs> The Benny Zucker arc in Gintama is the very first official main serious arc of the Gintama series. Now, it is not the first arc, as there are other arcs that have come before this arc, such as the Mother Arc, the Infant Strife arc, as well as various other ones that do have some relevance to the, you know, other arcs that will come about later on in the series, but this is where we really get to see Gintama truly show its colors to see if it actually can be different other than what we have seen in the previous 50 episodes of Gintama of just, you know, its comedy based sort of, you know, atmosphere. In this arc, this is where we get to see a much darker tone to the series of Gintama. The Benny Zaka arc for Gintama is a major arc for the series as it not only shows that Gintama is a nonsensical comedy based series, like I said before, but it can also show that Gintama has a story that shows emotion, drama, as well as action, and it not only does that in this arc, but also reveals some of the origins of Gintoki, Katsura, and Takasugi's past, as well as revealing other characters that will appear later in the series. Now, speaking about Tagasugi, when it comes down to Tagasugi within this arc, he is not necessarily the main antagonist, I would say. I would say that Nizo the Assassin is the antagonist that Gintoki faces and poses the most threat. If anything, Tagasugi is just kind of on the sidelines, just watching as everything unfolds, and that is technically what he does in the beginning as well. I mean, while he's not the main antagonist, he basically starts everything, so to speak, as he plans to start a coup d'etat into mass producing the Benny Zakura sword so that way he and his followers can take over all of Edo. Now we don't really have at this point the main reasonings as to why he is exactly doing this, but we do know from the previous episodes of Gintama that we have seen and also within this arc as well is that when it comes to Katsura, Gintoki's and Takasugi's past, it wasn't really the best relationship due to something that eventually happened which made them all separate. I have no idea what that is though but 
just from what I saw within this movie, it does seem as though when it comes down to these three individuals, they did have a very dark past during the war. Now, as I stated, Takasugi wants to mass produce the Benny Zakura sword. We only see one of it being used within this arc here, but just to give a clarification as to what exactly the Benny Zakura sword is, it is basically a sword that is classified as a demon sword. However, simply put, it's just a biomechanical sword. That's basically what it is. It's a bioweapon. And what it actually can do is that it can also infect the host into pretty much taking over their body, which in turn leaves the host completely you know, insane, like they lose their sanity from using this sword, but in turn, this makes the sword even stronger and almost impossible to beat down. Like, even in this arc, we actually see Nizo the Assassin, the user who uses this sword, take down an anti-foreigner ship, and I'm like, yo! Now, the Kihei Tai is a group that is made by Takatsugi and also composed of Nizo the Assassin, which is the user who uses the Benizakura sword in this arc. Uh, while we see Takatsugi and also Nizo within this group, we also have three new characters that actually make their debut within this arc as well, known as uh, Kijima Makoto, the gunslinger girl, Takachi Henpei, who technically can't blink at all, and then Kawakami Bansai as well. So we got introduced to those characters, we'll most likely see them later in the arcs, and then we also have Tetsuya, who is the brother of Tetsuko, who created the Benny Zakura sword. Tetsuya did. Also, in the beginning of this first arc, this is really where we first see Gintoki's Katsura's and Takasugi's teacher for the very first time before the moments of his death. I mean, well... I, I have no idea. The teacher could be dead, or maybe he could be a survivor of the war. I have no idea. But if he did die, this would probably give a little bit more clarification as to why exactly, you know, the group kind of disbanded. You know, it would have to have happened due to the teacher's passing, as well as some other stuff that added on to that. I mean, I have no idea. I'm still <laughs> watching Gintama, so I have no idea at this point. But... You know, this is where we first get to see the teacher, so I thought this was pretty cool because we do know that the teacher was very special to these three individuals and basically taught them the way of the sword and, I don't know, maybe might have even helped out during the war. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure whether he is alive or dead at this point, but I do know for a fact that this was technically the very first time in which we first got to see Gintoki's, Takatsuki's, and Katsura's teacher, and just, you know, who he was as an individual, how much he meant to them, he was most likely the one who taught them the way of the sword, and eventually, you know, we're gonna figure out more about him as the series goes on in Gintama, and I'm very quite interested to learn the origin story behind the teacher as well well as the three of them. Now there is another character that gets introduced in this arc as well. There's actually a lot of characters that get introduced in this arc now that I think about it. But anyways, there is a character that gets introduced very early on in this arc and while he doesn't really have a big significance to the overall arc as a whole, this is most likely where we can assume that we'll most likely see him you know, later on in the coming arcs of Gintama as the series goes on, but right now when it comes down to the Benny Zaka arc, he is not really, you know, a prominent figure within this arc. He's just kind of there to appear and to basically state that, hey, yo, I'm here, okay? Just pay close attention to my character, but I'll let you see what I look like, and I'm talking about Kagura's older brother. Now, it was stated that in the Umibozo arc that... Kagura's mother is dead. Uh, she died from sickness, I believe. Her father is well and alive, um, Umibozo. And then you also have Kagura's elder brother that was talked about as well. Now, it was only very briefly, and in this arc, this is where we first get to see him. But we don't really know much more about him other than that, so... Yeah, but it was cool to see him. Now, definitely my favorite part of this arc of Gintama was the animated fight sequence that played out between Nizo the Assassin and Gintoki underneath the bridge. And we just get to see how strong this Benny Zakura sword is. And how Gintoki is like taking it like a champ, but at the same time, like, th this is where we get to see, like, that he is technically 
you know, powerless against this sword. He gets fucking ripped to shreds in that fight sequence and then you have the oh the the hypest moment out of this arc shinpachi fucking coming down on nizo's arm and slashing that thing off clean off he cleaved it off dude yo shinpachi i mean yo shinpachi Calm the fuck down, dude, because, I mean, you go from being this, you know, character that really does not do anything in the series of Gintama. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the dude, he's funny as shit, but, yo, he, like, did nothing within 50 episodes, but, yo, him doing that, him coming down and chopping off Kizo's arm, I was like, yo! Holy shit! Yo, Shinpachi better get more screen time. I'm telling you, he better become a badass. Because what I saw in this arc, I fucking love that shit. I want more of that. I mean, even Elizabeth got screen time in this arc and was even commanding a whole squadron of samurai. I'm like, yo, what is going on here? Overall, there was just a lot of fighting here, and it was very entertaining to watch. And just to see Gintama go from this comedy-based anime and do a complete 180 and showing it, you know, more darker, drama-esque side of it was very, very cool to see. And even amongst all the fights, we even have this one fight at the very end of the arc in which Katsura and Gintoki are, you know, just going all off of this army of Amanto. And it's just like, there's like an insert song that plays in as they are fighting about. And it's just, it's just awesome. It, it, there was a lot of good moments with this arc. Now, by the end of this arc, this is where we get to see Gintoki receive a specialized sword that was made by Tetsuko, which is the sister of Tetsuya, who made the Benizakura sword, and it has, like, this uh, dragon hilt uh, on the sword, and it ends up taking out the Benizakura sword, so a bioweapon ends up getting defeated by that specialized sword for whatever reason is okay with me i mean i, I the fight was cool <laughs> i wish there was more of a reason to you know why exactly that is but i mean it's a nameless sword i mean i don't really know you know what its capabilities are but i mean hey it took down uh kizo the assassin as he was being corrupted from the benizakura sword so i mean there is that but i don't really know if gintoki is going to use this sword in the future of the series of gintama or not uh because we normally see gintoki carrying around a wooden sword um but we do know that you know, he did carry a regular sword back in the war era, and I'm assuming, you know, after the war, he never once wanted to take another life because, you know, he was known as the White Demon for how many people, I guess, you know, he killed during that time. Um, but, you know, is he going to use that sword, you know, eventually later on? I have no idea. Now, also regarding Kizo the Assassin, the user of the Benizakura sword, we did see by the end of this arc that his whole body got completely taken over by the sword itself to the point in which he was on the brink of insanity. So, and, and Gintoki did ultimately defeat him within this arc. So, I'm not exactly sure if Kizo the Assassin will be returning because it kind of seemed as though he died within this arc, but then again, I could be completely wrong. Maybe the author has plans to bring him back later on in the series. I'm not exactly sure, but how the dude is going to recuperate from all of that, I have no idea. So, yeah. Also, the Shinsengumi learns a little bit about Gintoki actually being involved in the war, and uh, I believe Toshio ends up having Yamazaki, who is the spy of the Shinsengumi, to go ahead and spy on Gintoki for, you know, the future of the series, just to learn more about him, where he comes from, just his origins in general, and who he was back in the day. So, there is big stuff planned there, so there is that. As well as we have uh, Gintoki, as well as Katsura proclaiming to Tagatsuki that, hey, next time we meet, we're no longer friends. We are going to be enemies. And just knowing that at the time during the war where they helped out each other as well as their childhood when they were friends, to see now that eventually the next time they meet, they're going to be enemies, like that is going to be pretty cool to see and I'm and I just really want to learn more about these three characters I really want to see you know their overall origins what caused them to separate from each other and just who they are 
today and who they were back then. I really want to see that. So yeah, just to see what Gintama is going to be like from here on out is going to be something very special to see and I can't wait to see, you know, more of the series as I progress further on and to see what further develops on from here on out. Learning about, you know, the teacher, the three individuals, Katsura, Takatsugi, and Gintoki, as well as learning more about Kagura's brother. You know, all this stuff that has been building up, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen on even further on. I I I'm enjoying Gintama. I really am. It's getting me hyped. This is like the most fun I've had with the series in quite some time. So yeah guys, please do not leave any spoilers in the comments down below as I am still watching Gintama and want to fully experience this series to the best of my ability. So if you are going to comment, let me know what you guys thought about this arc, the Benny Zakura arc. What were your overall thoughts and opinions on this arc as a whole? Also, what did you think about this review? And also let me know in the comments down below on what you guys think of Gintama reviews on the channel. Would you like to see more? What arc reviews would you like to see from me regarding the series of Gintama? I already reviewed the Benny Zakura arc. What is the next major arc in Gintama that you would like to see me review here on the channel? I've been hearing a lot about the Shinsengumi Crisis arc, so that could be a candidate. Really quick, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters, Memory Reacts, Dallin White, and C. Michelle Run. Thank you to all of you who have been supporting me on Patreon, just been helping me on the channel when it comes to down to these reviews in general. It really does mean a lot, guys. If any of you out there, uh, you know, would like to consider donating to my Patreon, a link will be down in the description down below, as well as my other social media links, such as my Twitter, if you wish to follow me on there as well. That about does it for this one, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Hey, hey.